name is Jamapu, born in uh, Okai, the southern section of Haiti. 36 years since I'm in business here, selling books doesn't bring money. It's a passion, you know. You like it, you want to help the community, you want your community to keep their culture, history. The first generation of Haitians who came here in the 80s, they are getting old, just like me. Now I am 81. The second generation, though, is well educated. They are graduated, they are professionals. They don't come down here. The young people are not interested in that type of businesses. And then you have those developers that come and they're just grabbing everything. And it's easy for them to grab because those buildings, those houses, those uh, don't belong to Haitians. You know, Haitians came here with nothing, zero dollars, with a bag on their back when they came here on those boat people in the 80s. So they couldn't buy businesses, they couldn't buy houses. They are renting, they are leasing. I got two daughters and a son. They are physicians. They don't even come here. They come when I got a big event. Little Haiti is not refreshing itself. There is a problem. Who's going to take over those mom and pop businesses? Magic City is a billion dollars project. So when these people, they are finished, there will be hotels, commercial and residential, all kind of activities. They even think about having a big park here, but that's for them, not for the community. Because when they everything is all done, there won't be any Haitians here, just a few. Miami's new urban core, surrounded by vibrant and inspired, yet distinct destinations just minutes away. High-end shopping in the design district, retail and dining in Midtown Miami, the ever-changing art and entertainment scene of Wynwood. My name is Ashley Toussaint. I am a resident of Little Haiti, um, owner of Tucson Consulting and Immigration Services, also assistant principal at KIT Miami. I've been living a little Haiti since 1988 when my dad bought the house right there on 62nd Street. What well, man, what are you going for? 25. You got me in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every Haitian American household is going to have their story, but my parents always talked about going back home. Even though we were born here, me and my siblings we were all born here, the story was always about going back to Haiti when it got better. So everything I'm doing now, like inheriting the business, and inheriting my, my, my dad's home in Little Haiti was not supposed to happen here. It was supposed to happen in Haiti. My dad did this full time, so I can only do this in like my moonlight in hours. A lot of people do, you know, if they get a chance to like get a good job or move to a different city with different experiences, they do leave and, and don't turn back, you know, because it takes a lot. As much as I would like to say Little Haiti is booming and has much opportunity for the kids that are coming up, it's, it's not really a reality, but that's the reality that me and a lot of like-minded people were trying to build. I grew up in Little Haiti because my grandmother had the store in Little Haiti for so long. It's basically a variety store. It, um, first we started off with a 99 cent store, which was across the street. The rent over there was getting a little bit more expensive than we wanted to pay, and then she just moved here because it was a better better option for her. I used to have to come here every day, catch the walk, catch the jitney, then come here, do my homework, help my grandmother. She'll buy me whatever I would want or whatever to eat. Fred. What's up, baby? What's up, My grandmother gave me this store on my 18th birthday. It's very important for me to carry on the tradition because a lot of the wisdom that she knows is in the, the Haitian spiritual you know, realm. So it's like, 
I don't want to lose that information, but I say I can't be here 24-7. Actually, you do have to work outside of this business because like this only takes care of the overhead in itself and then her bills. Someone comes here the other day and said, I'm looking at your building there and uh, you can have all your books if you want, all I need. And even said, I don't need the physical building you have here. I need the land. And he offers me a million dollars. I said, I'm here to stay. I'm not going anywhere. I said, this is my legacy to the community. Even if I die, I want my children to leave it right here. Little Haiti, because of gentrification and, and, and the high rents, a lot of people that will be able to just walk in here and get services now live 10, 20 miles away now. and. Uh, you know, we're, we're losing our neighborhood. It's like more so Haitians come here and buy, so the Haitian dollar is very prevalent in the area. So if a lot of the Haitians move out of the area, it's like some businesses won't be able to survive. Uh, now you start to see uh, more uh, people of different uh, cultures coming in, Hispanic people, white people. And you're starting to see a lot of people leave. You've seen a lot of empty buildings, a lot of empty businesses. You're not seeing as many young people in the street anymore. Uh, I see the boundaries closing in on us. Um, my hopes is that um, we are able to preserve a significant amount of it to where we have a home for our culture. So I know in, the, in moving forward, we will be talking about grant opportunities and, and ways for people to access this funding that has been available. As far as the grants, as far as the application process, as far as the guidelines, um, you know, we have had some challenges and we're still here. I have not looked at the ceiling for that. So now we have exact director. Now we can kind of like start getting funds and going through the process, like guidelines and calling the city making sure things are getting approved in, in appropriate channels. I can't do that. The board is um, all volunteer, full, we are all volunteer, we have our own careers. Our job is to hear what the community wants um, and try to execute based on what the community's needs are. City of Miami Commission, with his board, unanimously created the boundaries of Little Haiti. It is a marker in the city of Miami. There is no debate. You know, we are taking in sandwich now. When you see the design district coming north, and you have now those developments in the 80s, 70s, 80s, next to El Portal, you know, coming south. Magic city, innovation city, you know, this is going to replace the name of Little Haiti in the long run. People's culture never die, that's, that's for sure. It will survive somewhere, somewhere else. Also, for the Haitians to keep on fighting, especially the second and the third generation of Haitians, and they, they have to have a say, they have to have a foot in exactly what's going on here. You know, don't give up.